Hey everybody, today we're doing something on this channel that we've never tried before. We're gonna deep fry a steak and then test it against a pan fried steak and see which one wins. So follow me and let's turn up the taste. <laughs> we've cooked steaks a lot of different ways on this channel. Over fire, underwater, in the broiler, on the stove, in the oven, in countless other ways. What haven't we tried? Well, we haven't tried deep frying it, and that's about ready to change today. As you know, I like to consider myself the Da Vinci of the meats. Here we have two delicious looking ribeyes, choice, that we've salted for about an hour. We're going to deep fry one and pan fry the other and report back to you the differences. Now, we have some oil heating up. Let's see if it's ready. All right, so here's the setup. We have two 10-inch cast iron skillets on the same size burner. Over here, we have peanut oil, which we've used to fry chicken wings and just had it around the house. It has a very high smoke point. Also really good for frying a lot of different things, hopefully steak, but there's only one way to find out. We're going to heat this oil until it gets to a minimum of 350, probably closer to about 360 degrees. Then we're gonna drop the ribeye in. We're gonna let that get cooking first. I think it's going to take a little bit longer than the pad, than the pan, pad, pan fried steak right over here. Uh, we're also gonna use peanut oil over here, although I traditionally use avocado oil. I wanna keep them both the same to reduce any differences in the flavor. So once this gets to 360, we're gonna go ahead and drop in the steak. We're gonna then fire this up. Let that get to about 400 degrees surface temperature, which I can measure both these temperatures with my infrared thermometer. Right now, we're at about 165 degrees on this oil. I'm gonna grab a beer, give us about five more minutes, and then game on. All right, guys, so this oil is taking a little longer to heat up than I thought, so I did what I always do when I have a little free time, search for conspiracy theories online, and there is solid evidence that birds, they're not real, they're government drones. Now, you ever wonder why they sit on those wires? They gotta recharge their batteries. It makes complete sense. And now I know why they've been outside my window staring at me. They never stop. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, it's taken a little bit longer than I expected, but we've reached a temperature on this oil of 300 and about 63 degrees right now. So time for the moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and drop this in. And let it do its magic from there. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and heat up this pan and get this one ready to go. While this is cooking, I just wanna mention, I'm really not sure how I'll know that this is done. I'll typically check an internal temperature, but that's gonna be really difficult to do while it's in the oil. I guess I can pull it out and check, but I guess for right now, I'm just gonna let it run about a similar number of minutes I would for a pan cooked in a steak. Pan cooked in a steak, no, a steak cooked in a pan, right? Maybe about six minutes, check it then, see the internal temperature. How would you check the temperature on this? I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Okay, so that's been in there for about two minutes. I'm waiting for this to reach a surface temperature of about 350, no, I'm sorry, I'm waiting for this to reach a surface temperature of about 400 degrees. Then I'll put in a little bit of peanut oil in there, drop it and Test results. What do you guys think? Should I flip the steak in the oil? I don't know. I'm gonna do it. I don't know if I need to, but we'll do it. There we go. Okay, got that one going. We are at 400. A little bit of peanut oil. Drop this. Give it a nice press. And we're gonna drop the temperature a little bit to a medium high. I press so it gets that nice contact, helps create a really nice crust on that steak. You want all of it touching the heat. We're at four minutes now on the steak in the oil. I'm just gonna pull it out and just do a quick read on the internal temperature. Oh my gosh, we are at 120 degrees already. That was quick. That is done. That is done. We're gonna set that aside, turn off that oil. That is done after four minutes. Now, I don't cook with peanut oil very often. I typically use avocado, but that's a great looking color on this pan. All right, guys, it took a while, but the cook is finally done. First and foremost, I have to say, waiting for that oil to heat up, oil? No, waiting for that 
oil to heat up took like 20 minutes man i could have cooked two steaks in that time i may have said that earlier i don't know but in any event here they are they're done over here is the pan fried steak over here is the deep fried steak and I mean, you guys see it just like I do, right? Like the crust, the Maillard reaction is so much better over here on the pan fried steak. And it's just getting that higher temperature, that closer contact where that pan is at like 400 plus degrees. This was deep frying in oil at 365 degrees. So it's just not as hot. So that makes sense. Um, one thing that I can say is that this steak cooked faster, only about two minutes, but that's about 30% as this took about six, seven minutes, somewhere in there. So I, given the time it took to actually heat the oil, I don't see that the shorter cooking time is any kind of real win in this case. So let's cut it and see how they look. All right, so we have the steaks all cut up right here. And I guess I'll just go right to the middle. Right to the middle of the steak, right over here is the deep fried steak. As you can see, we have some gray around the exterior. Not as much pink as I would like, but it's just, as I mentioned, tough to know what is the internal temperature. I'm really glad I pulled it out at four minutes because it was done. It was coming up closer to about 130 degrees. So there's probably some carry over there to get us to about 135. Over here, we have our pan fried steak. As you can see, it just has a way better, not only exterior, but interior color. You know, I, I know that uh, while the pan fried steak looks better and the deep fried steak doesn't look as good. I mean, there's other things to consider. First of all, when it comes to looks, I mean, crawfish don't look that good either, but they taste delicious. So you just never know. You can't judge by looks alone, but practically speaking, what the hell am I gonna do with all that oil now? I really don't deep fry um, a lot. So it just kind of becomes a waste. So I think that that outside of the time and the other concerns, the look, I think that practically what to do with that oil is, I, I don't know, but uh, let's find out how it tastes. Get a manageable bite here. First on the deep fried. I mean, it is a choice steak, but that's just not tender. I, I mean, it's just not as what I would expect it to be. I don't know if that's from the deep frying itself or just this particular cut, but okay, that one's a little bit better. I'm still experiencing the type of chew I would have more in line with a New York strip steak. I love a New York strip steak. I just look to a ribeye to be a little bit more tender. Let's try the pan seared side. It's basically the same cut of the steak. Over here, you'll see we have those two about even. So this, and, and they both came out of the same package. They were both USDA choice from the exact same package. Time to cleanse my palate, of course. I will say over here, I notice no negative taste effects from the peanut oil itself. It tastes, outside of the chew factor, it tastes about what I would expect a steak to taste like. The first thing that I'm picking up right away is the better crust on this pan seared steak. It, it just has a better bite to it. It is more tender as well. Again, I, I don't know if that's the, the, just the type of steak. It's not the right way to say it. it uh, the nuance of the steak said another way. Um, you don't get, you got the chewiness over here. You didn't get the crust, but there's another important thing I'm getting hit with right away. You can taste the salt in this one. I mean, it really pops like you would expect salt on a steak to pop. Not getting the salt, not getting the crust, which I expect. All oh, this cleansing of my palate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been cleansing my palate all day, even when I'm not eating. Clear winner, hands down. It's not even close to me. Not only does this steak look better, it cooks faster and tastes better. I don't think I'll ever deep fry another steak ever again. Tell me why I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below. If you deep fried a steak, did I not have the oil? set to the right temperature and not use the right kind of oil. I don't know, but if you've done this at home, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for checking out the channel and cheers. I'll see you guys next time.